Hi. Uh, chances are, if you're watching this, you are Illusion B. Because some time ago, Illusion B asked me if I could show him how to like hit zone and stuff. Because our schedules don't really overlap super well. I just thought I'd make this like a video of me just like hit zoning a request I've got from someone from start to finish and then like editing it later or something. I can, I can also link the full thing, but <laughs> it's probably going to be a bit long and unnecessary. Uh, but yeah, so this will just be a video of me hit on a map using mapping tools and then like explaining my thought process behind some things, blah, blah, blah. So this is the map. Maybe I'll, I can just take a look at it a little bit. I already did a look at it a little bit, but not that much. So, well, roughly speaking, tells me is there weren't any like super rare instruments in it, so I don't have to look up any very very out there samples or anything. There are like some bass sounds or whatever, but usually, at least I am not a big fan of using like bass sounds or something. I think those sound stupid when used as hit sounds. So most of it is probably going to be whistles, some electronic drums, and obviously there's this like one third section somewhere. Yeah, like that stuff. And something new said in the request was that these sliders are supposed to have a funny sound because they're Among Us sliders because Among Us sus vocals. Wow, so funny. I guess first the first thing we should do is open the song folder and create a copy of this. Can't see it yet. So create a copy of the song folder. Easiest thing to do would be just click on here, Control C, Control V, and sometimes the rename, but it's not super necessary. Now we just have to rename this. Say F2, rename, call it HS layers or something, open it with Notepad. Uh, version, save. Now it's renamed. So if I close this now, now I have an exact copy of this map. Because we're going to hit sound it with, it sounds, uh, PV helper. One of the things that I like to do is change the map to Mania because that's uh, it makes hit sounding with hit sound preview helper basically a little bit easier. It's technically speaking possible to hit sound with the standard in, in, within the standard editor. Basically, the way this tool works is that uh, this X position and the Y position here 
they correspond to coordinates on the play field. So let's say I place a circle here as a coordinates x0, y0. I could put in here 0, 0 and say every instrument uh, or every note that's in this position is going to have a sample applied here with this fi uh, the file name that I would put in here and then the hit addition and whatever. So it's possible to use that to hit sound in standard. But because Ozomania also has those coordinates, it's a little bit easier. Can't quite go into the reasons why it's a little bit easier to use. Basically just, um, it's only a limited amount of like tracks and it's very easy to place multiple things at once as opposed to in a standard editor where you have to like put a note uh, there or something and then drag it over, make it to B and stuff. It's just takes longer. Now, I already have like a template here that I can use, which already has basically all the keys set up for me. Usually I also do a uh, go into an error section, press control L, and then maybe with cont control left click, keep those key eye spots, just so I can completely redo the volume changes basically. So the first layer that just you see here, right, is just it's a, like a crash sound, a kick, and the main melody. The first thing I would set in hit some preview helper would be whistle and soft addition here. I wouldn't put in a file name, maybe call it whistle. Name here is just for organizational purposes. It doesn't really change anything, but the file name does. And not putting in anything, we'll just use the default samples. And for whistles, I think that makes sense. That's perfectly fine. Uh, for other stuff, we'll have to insert more things. So by the way, when I'm switching between these things, I'm like using the numbers as shortcuts. So like just pressing two will get you notes, blah, blah. Um, I think the most efficient thing in hit sounding usually is just quickly listening what's in the song and then starting following one layer in an entire section and then going to the, uh, changing to the other instruments. So let's not just off with. I will just start hit sounding the melody. Um, I might have noticed that when I was placing this down or something, I was not even listening what was there. I was just assuming based on what I heard earlier in the song that this is going to be like a repeating thing. Sometimes that's just faster and if there was something different here, I could just remove the notes or something. Okay, so that's basically the melody done in this section and a little shortcut in mapping tools. Under preferences here, for me it's this combination of keys, you can set it to anything. It's this quick run hotkey thing. Um, and there's these three uh, things here. So basically, quick run and hotkey does is it uses one of the tools in mapping tools just by pressing the combination. And then uh, you can select which tools it's going to use based on what you put in here. So if I have no object selected, it's going to run hit some preview helper. If there's only single thing selected, it's going to be slider completion and blah, blah, blah. For now, we only care about hits and preview helper. So what it so far would do is whenever there's an object in this position, it's going to put whistles on it. I just run the tool. It just put whistles on everything. Because otherwise, these notes obviously didn't know what happened. Hits on supplied. You have to actually run the tool to apply everything with hits and preview helper at least. Yeah, anyway. Now, thing I noticed is the next section it's basically the exact same melody, so I can just copy it over and cross-check if it's correct. Anyway, another sound I heard was a big crash. So we can just put like a, say, a note here. Insert like a softed finish here. We can just insert finish soft here, blah, blah, blah. And we should start to find a kick. Okay, so any samples I want to add, I have to put into the map folder of this map, of the copy of the original thing. Now, I will just go like through my collection of hit sounds I have, just this one, and test a few out. Uh, besides just cycling through all the samples, another thing I like to do is opening FL Studio using that instead. Yeah, generic dubstep kick should be fine. Some folder. F2, kick, normal, hit normal. Okay, 
we should find a snare as well, probably. Alright, that one might be a good idea. You never know how it sounds unless you test it out. So I'll just first put it in just to see how it sounds in context. Should probably be soft hit clap. In terms of why I'm choosing those things that I'm choosing, usually kick drums can either be normal hit normals or drum hit normals. That's the kind of system I use. And then snares can either be normal hit normals um, or claps. For me, that depends on how strong the snare sound is. Like in a dubstep kind of sounding song, like this one. The snare sounds pretty loud, so using a normal hit normal doesn't quite fit. But in more acoustic sounding songs, where there's maybe a lot more snares, I think it works a lot better. Like let's say this song or something. There's a lot more snares and the snares are a bit less strong. There's also like... I feel like this where there's like a lot of snares at once. In that case, it fits a lot more if it's like normal hit normals instead of claps, because claps being like spammed everywhere sounds less nice than normal hit normals. At least that's how I would explain it. But either way, both kind of work. Advantage of using a clap instead of a hit normal would be that usually players only turn off custom hit sounds or primarily turn off custom hit sounds because the, norm the hit normals of their skin are being replaced. So there's also some systems of using hit sounding where instead of using normal uh, hit normals for the kicks, you use whistles to avoid uh, changing the hit normals at all. Using whistles then limits you in hit sounding the actual melody. Something so another system people might use is like two claps, like no, normal hit clap for kick drums, soft hit clap for snare or something like that. That system has the downside that it doesn't, it sounds kind of stupid unless you're playing with custom hit sounding, but it preserves the hit normals completely. So players might be encouraged to instead use uh, custom hit sounds. I personally, I just like the method of normal hit normal or drum hit normal for kicks, depending on how strong, how loud the kick is. Normal hit normal is usually stronger. So in an electronic song like this, it kind of makes sense. Um, if it's a bit weaker than normal drum hit normal is totally fine. Otherwise, the thing I explained with the cl uh, claps earlier, then finishes are kind of always for crash symbols or like effects or something. And usually almost all samples but um, uh, almost all editions I use uh, are going to be soft because it happens to be the case that um, a no normal sample set, at least without custom hit sounding, sounds kind of annoying. Like the whistles and the claps, they're a bit too strong in most cases. Finisher as well. People gravitate towards using soft for almost everything. And then there are some drum additions that work really well in specific cases, like maybe take this song or something. Like these kind of samples. The Right cymbals. Right cymbals or open hi hats work really well with the drum hit hit whistle because that one already sounds kind of like a open hi hat. Also, stuff like this, like tom fills, they sound really good with drum hit clap and drum hit finish. But obviously, then using those samples will kind of disallow you from hit sounding the melody, or at least I would not recommend hit sounding the melody with drum hit whistles because they are usually too strong and sound too much like. A drum. Okay, I noticed that the drum pattern was repeating, so I'm just going to keep copy pasting. Okay, what was the reason why I chose that sample as opposed to the other snare ones? Kind of honestly, it doesn't matter too much. Like, you have to first, of the, I have a bunch of samples like these and a lot of cases they all just kind of work like as long as they are loud enough to not blend with the song too much they usually fit i kind of like it when the snares don't sound too different from the actual sound in the song but mostly this is some stuff that can't really be explained very well like i can't explain you why i would prefer the snare over this besides saying it has a stronger attack etc i mean i guess i can kind of explain it i think something that's sort of true with a lot of um, hit sounds is that it's better if they are like a little bit shorter but a lot louder in turn like this kind of edit because um, then they 
sort of fu uh, usually function a lot better as just hit sounds, uh, as they're more audible, they're stronger transient. But the reason why I chose that snare is just because I think it sounds, the uh, start of it sounds very similar to the one in the song. It just is a more aggressive, more louder version of it. A kick could potentially be a bit louder. Something I could do if I really wanted to edit a kick that I had or something. Could take this one or something. And make it really loud. Then it would be more audible. But it's not important to think about that right now, I guess. I should just continue with the actual hit sounding. One thing I'm thinking about is what should the volume of this section be? I think it would make sense if this one was like 70 ish and the previous one was a little bit quieter, so like 55. Uh, 60? I think 60 is good. The reason why I think 70, 60 fits here is because it is a relatively intense section. It's probably not as intense as this one, but it is kind of intense, and it's more intense than this one. Or this one. Probably go 50 here or something. Something I kind of heard was that's kind of like a loud finish here. It would be like a, you could use like a big drum or something to represent that. Mm, these are all not long enough for me, kind of. see what I have. Here. That one could work. Um, samples like these, it's always worth checking them in an actual editor. Like here you can see, so we see some silence right at the start. So I have to edit that out. This could also be done in, in Audacity. It's not like you can only do it in FL Studio or something like that. I'll just do it by hand in this case. Let's make this a normal hit finish. Because a normal hit finish sounds deeper. Let's see how it sounds. It blends a bit too well, because it has like no high end. Maybe I can fix that, kinda. <laughs> Could just find a different sample, instead of editing this one. Maybe I need to make it even louder. Sometimes stuff in FL Studio will sound like really stupid when I make it this loud, like... But it will then sound different in the editor. It's kind of an interesting thing in the editor where, or in OS in general, samples that go over like... 0 dB will just internally in, um, in the game's mixer be like limited at 0 dB. So you can make like uh, create effects where the actual hit sounds are like making the song quieter, like they are ducking the song. That can be used to just make hit sounds more audible by simply making them louder. Oftentimes, if you have certain hit sounds and you think sound good, but they, they just don't stand out enough, sometimes you could just make them like 3 decibels louder and, and it will be fine. That's kind of audible. I could differentiate these from these. A different sample, plainly speaking, with like a different whistle, but I don't care. That's, that's my answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm recognizing that it's the same thing, but it repeats. Let's copy everything. I'll mute the effects for a second so I can hear the song better, because it's like a drum going on. In this case, I probably should look at what the actual map is doing in this part. Okay, so the actual map isn't really mapping the sounds that I'm hearing here. Like there's a snare in the background. Something that I could do is... And I hear that something like this is in it, so... That one in the song is so weak, I would consider actually using drum hit normal for it. Let's see just how that sounds. This is maybe not too necessary, but I can just keep this pattern and roughly repeat it. Then in the actual map, it will like land on some stuff. <laughs> Double check. I said like a stream somewhere or something. Oh. Never thing that's possible to do here is do a slight build up in volume over time. Should be a marker here. Probably 
100% here or something because it's really loud. Basically, it's just increasing at somewhat steady interval at energy, and I made it a little bit faster. Okay, next part, we can probably keep roughly the same drums. So, what we're doing in this section is just do the drums first and then hit some whatever melody we have. Maybe turn on the speed a little bit so you can hear it better. Kicks are the hardest to hear, but I mean, that's the same whether hit sounding or mapping. I guess hit sounding, it's more important that you actually listen to what the song is doing than when you're mapping. It's always easier to just copy an entire section of stuff and then add some additional things or like remove them than just doing everything, just doing everything in one go. <laughs> Here it's like completely different. I can already kind of hear it. There's like a fill here. In most cases, when there's like a beginning of a new section, it always just fits to put a finish there. Mm, actually, I think it might be better if there was like a different snare here, because the one drums up faster, it's like a bit too strong. save this project. That's called reanimate. Done. And something easy we can now just do is take all the snares, just move it over here. Now they should all be the different snare. I think the drums might even be the exact same. That next section, so we could just copy them. But let's listen without effect volume. At a slower speed. It's actually a crash here, but maybe that's in the previous section as well. Yeah, there's a few extra shit here. A bit of extra shit here. I mean, and there's nothing here. Ah, uh, well, I guess there's that sample now. Now I can start with the whistles. Now I think I noticed is that the whistle probably has to be a stronger one because the uh, yeah because it's an electronically produced song that sometimes happens. So soft hit whistle normalized. That's like. It's a thing I've made before. It's just a soft, the standard soft whistle, but louder. Because for some reason, the default one isn't very loud. Seems to be the case that the next section is just the exact same as this one. So, with some extra stuff in the background. So, I can just copy paste again. Ah, it's actually not. Okay. I'll play some markers. No interchange, so. Might be the same drums as in the previous section. Ah, this one, my bad. Oh, we have this key A section be 100% volume. <laughs> It's completely different drums now, so we have to find something else. Like that one, but shorter. Let's see if that is. That's probably not enough. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And um, normalize it, like remove all dust. Mm, that can probably be a soft clap. Or oh, actually, better idea would be there's a normal hit normal and then making this a drum finish. 
Come on, probably has to be louder. I have a louder one like that. That's probably better this way. The fucking noise at the end. It's hard to say whether that click will actually be audible at the end or not. But let's see how it sounds in context. It might still not be loud enough actually. That's better. Actually speaking, the other one could also be a little bit louder. Better if we use this one. It's almost a bit too clicky. In that case, I have to change these because I can't. It can't be drum. That wouldn't make sense anymore. It has to be like normal, normal softed clap. Otherwise, I can't really put in softed whistles. No, I think those should already be swing. the same melody as this one. Maybe slightly different, but let's see. Yeah, it has some more shit. Actually, I think I should just keep it as the normal fucking melody. That other softer melody. Doesn't, it just doesn't warrant the whistles, in my opinion. Uh, actually. Just a break there. Okay. Oh, interesting enough. There was some stuff in the background. This is almost the same. It's very long. Gone. the wrong section over. That's funny. This shit is different, but the uh, drums are the same. Probably. section now, but it's now an actual key eye. That's interesting. this pattern but just repeating. Uh, dun dun dun. Oh, more like this. It'd probably be good if this got progressively louder like 70, 80, 90, more of a sense of build up finality. And this is like let me put a finisher there just because it's the last note must be finisher okay one more thing to do is where are the amogus lighters it was just this one part here so let's find a funny sound haha uh -huh. amogus amogus <laughs> i think that's a good one amogus uh -huh, so funny it needs to be louder actually
Okay, so the way this works now is that we should probably save this again. Now, if we fit some of this entire thing in hit some preview helper, I have to go to hit some studio and make a new project. Click on the plus button down here. Imported sounds. This name is irrelevant. And we have to select the map we have open right now. What should we do? And there are these options here. This option is mostly irrelevant. These two are kind of good. Should always be left on. This one is kind of irrelevant as well. Now first we have to check whether additions and stuff are set correctly because sometimes they are not. Yeah, normal. Not normal. Hit normal. Soft hit club. But here it says soft normal. That should not be the case. It should be soft club. It should be a drum normal. That's true. And so soft hit finish. That's a normal, normal, soft whistle, clap. Is that supposed to be soft finish? I think. Normal finish? Actually. Yeah, I'll keep it a normal finish. Press this button here to make it the bass beat map. So if any changes to this map are being made, they are being made to this shit as well here. Default sample uh, is going to be the thing that's being played when nothing else is being played. So just search soft and like uh, some basic hi-hat, like F1 or something. And with all of that, I, can always, I didn't just press the run button. Call it like select us HS show results, delete files and export folder is what I usually have on. These two option, options should be relatively self-explanatory. This is the export folder. And then these options on here mostly don't matter unless you're hit sounding a map that's already hit sounded or you're trying to do something special like export a already existing map into a hit sound uh, layer diff instead. So doing the reverse of what we're doing right now. Anyway, export it does. The highest sample set is like four. So something I can do is to here and get some slider slides. I just take all of this shit and go to the original beat map, the song folder, post everything in, escape. Now there's a hit sound diff like this. Already with green lines and everything. So we can now save this project. We animate. Go to hit on copier. Just I won't send the person I'm making this for the actual copied over version, but I just want to hear how it sounds in case there are any mistakes. Okay, if there are, were multiple hit diffs, I could with the folder button here select all of them and like copy hit sounds over to multiple at once. But in this case, it's just a single diff, and usually I would set it to overwrite everything unless you're hit sounding only specific sections of a song, like a marathon or something. And Copy it's on slider audio, it's on copy sample sets, copy volumes, all that should be usually on. Mute slider ends should, I would leave that off usually. Oh, it's done, cool. Let's see how it sounds. Oh, there was another sus among us. Which is this? This is sample set 2. This is the right sample set. Could just go to the hits on diff and change that. Now I could just send this to the person I was doing this for. Okay. So with the actual hits on of this song, that's basically it. I mean, there are some things that I would tell the mapper to do them themselves. Like obviously there's going to be some sliders that like here, but the slider end could be muted. So there's no important sound here. And I think that it would be better if they did it, but me doing it would be incredibly unnecessary to be quite honest. <laughs> like I'm not going to sit here and add green lines everywhere where I don't even know if I should put it can also happen that there are some like sections that have not enough whistles like this one uh I'm not gonna add a whistle here I think it, sh it sounds fine as it is could be maybe a slider sl slide whistle or something make it more fancy but because I'm doing this for someone else and for myself I'm doing a, uh, making some shortcuts it just sounds better than no it's something at all what is this <laughs> anyway there's probably some uh, things I could go over, just about hit sounding in general. Um, when it comes to like songs with more out there instruments, I like this one, because this one obviously only has like standard sounding electronic drums, some whistles on everything, etc. It's not that interesting. You take a song more like, say, this one. Mm. Obviously, there's like some sounds, but. They don't really appear very often in standard acoustic music or something. In this case, usually I'm kind of just being a little bit inventive and seeing what functions with all the other um, sounds that I already have. Like, if you think which edition or hit normal sounds the most similar to that sound, like in the default skin, it's probably like a soft hit clap. So that's why this is mapped with a soft hit clap and then getting an extra custom for this. Sometimes it doesn't have to even be the same kind of sample. Like, like what is this? This is like uh, where the sound actually comes from is. And it's probably one of these kind of samples. It's like some snare or like rim shot or something from like a... I think it's not actually from this, but it's definitely like a rim shot snare and not that actual sound in the song. So why did I use that one instead of this sound that's probably actually in the song? Well, I didn't want to look for a sample of something that sounds similar online. 
and even then one it sounds similar enough and two if it was not exactly the same then it might blend too much with the song so in a way i just put something here that is audible enough and that kind of sounds a little bit similar to the sound so we have like this what well, is this an actual song i think in the actual song it is kind of like a similar hat like a uh, not hat a uh, snare it's like an 808 snare just got like a different sounding 808 snare I think that I could have found a better fitting sample for that here, but I kind of reminded me of an 808 snare roll, so I just made this. I mean, it sounds kind of like it could actually be what's happening in the song, even though it isn't. Yeah, a lot of the fills just reminded me of 808 snare, so that's why I put them there. And because I probably didn't really know any better sample to use, if I really dug on the internet or something, I could have maybe found something or made something from scratch that would have fit here. But mm, 808 snare just sounded fitting. Like the kind of patterns that are being done in the song by it are very similar to like an 808 snare. So something might be useful to go over is that there's like this guy from Midori Gian. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, I think that one is kind of good in going over how there is like different methods or structures to how people hit so uh, deal with hit sounding uh, drums and stuff. Like the most generic being like normal hit, normal drum and all for the kicks of the club snare or something else with uh, whistles for the vocals or melody soft finish crash blah 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 toms like the one that i've explained earlier and then there are obviously different ones like metal ones where mostly drum samples sets are being used and stuff like that i think usually when going when deciding which kind of system to use or which method to use for hit sounding something uh there's always going to be upsides and downsides to all of them it kind of depends on what song you sort of have like we go back to the song originally i actually had all of the snares as soft hit claps uh, as not normal hit normals i mean but then bn told me to change it to soft hit claps so i changed it but anyway before that i had the <laughs> normal hit normals and one of the reasons was that i believe there are some sections in the song where there are there's a combination of normal hit normal and drum hit finish so like snare and tom hit together that's kind of a thing that sometimes happens in like rock or metal but you can't really do that if your snare is a soft hit clap so that's what you do. That's one of the cases where using a normal hit novel totally works for hit sounding at a, uh, the snare instead. Just because there are these instruments in a song that happen at the same point in time. So you have to choose a hit sounding method that either fits what's happening there on the song that allows you to hit sound both of those things or you have to ignore one of those. I mean, another thing would be there's a section here with like ride symbols or something. Yeah, like this one. Kind of something I chose to do in the sections. Because there are so many of these ride samples, the section isn't really following the melody, like there's no whistles on the melody-ish. I mean, it still sounds kind of like it's following the song, or kind of following the melody even. But strictly speaking, I kind of made a decision here to say, hey, I think those ride symbols, I don't know, they seem more important and make up more of the identity of the section. And even if I, so I, can, I will ignore the main melody. But even though I am technically speaking ignoring it, it might not sound like it they just line up so well i think similar thing might have been the case in the illusion beam map you know there's like a build up here or something because there are like two different kind of drums going on here decided to instead of hit sounding that one drum sort of making that a clap sample just to make it a normal hit normal and then after the clap for the other one that one Simply because there's no other way to map both uh, drums at once. And specifically that one, I chose to make the normal hit novel because it's the more dense one. Like usually it makes more sense if the hit normals are denser uh, as opposed to claps. Claps being really dense just happens to sound more annoying than hit normals being denser. Like there being more of them. Should the sound be like a clap or a hit normal or should kick drum sound be a normal hit normal or a drum hit normal? A lot of cases it doesn't matter too, too much. The most common thing is for kicks to be normal hit normals and then the, the snares always claps. But in songs where there are either weird combinations of drums or there is a lot of different types of percussion might make sense more to think about which of these types of percussion is stronger making kind of hierarchy and then having like the claps is the, uh, is the strongest one normal at normal is less strong drum at normal is even less strong and soft at normal is the weakest that's one way to kind of think about which uh additions and hit normals to choose for what in most cases i guess 
you have to kind of test uh, test around, try to stay as close as possible to what would seem most conventional to most people, I guess, like the conventional German novel for kick, softer club for snare, and then ultimately the only for uh, ult the ultimate authority on all of that stuff is always just going to be whatever the BN says. If you have a BN who's like normal hit normals, they just can't be used for snares. That's just impossible. That doesn't make any sense. Why are you doing it? <laughs> um, then. That's how it is. Or get a different <laughs> end. <laughs> uh, anyway, another thing that I kind of talked about, um, what I didn't, I didn't talk about earlier, but I, I sort of just did, is that occasionally when hit sounding in like this editor here, I might think about um, if the samples that I have are, are like loud enough and stuff like that. And if they're not, I just go into like an audio editor, like this one, or even use FL Studio. Uh, you could use FL Studio, Audacity, whatever the fuck. As long as you just know how to do things like, say, this thing. Or turn up the volume. Um, kind of be able to edit the samples in a way where they give the playable feedback, as opposed to not. I mean, in general, just about what make what makes like hit sounds give more feedback versus not. Um, let's say we have these two kick samples here. We have number one and two. The one that's going to give more feedback is going to be the second one. Why? Well, because it is higher. It has more high frequency content. That thing at the beginning more higher pitch even though this one like i would say this one sounds nicer here like if you were just to use it in a song but because it has less frequency less sharp frequency content than this one it's going to like ultimately stand out less in general using a uh, sample set of a lot of like sub bass low frequency content they might sound good outside of the editor or the game but inside the game they are either not very audible or they just like <laughs> they only add like a mood or whatever they don't really give nice feedback as opposed to that one another thing would be which of these two samples is going to give a feedback feedback uh you might both of these they are now literally the same sound but the second one i made it shorter surprisingly the second one kind of will give a little bit more feedback like it's just a more sharp kind of feedback and especially what i what you can do is then uh, take that second one and make it really loud, like 12 dB louder. That might sound like weird, but if we go into the game, this is the thing I mentioned earlier with the limiting, something interesting happens. Um, this song is an interesting example of something I did when hit sounding it, which is actual hit sounds sound, uh, give a lot of good feedback, I think, or like they, even though they are just like, really short instead of being like that uh kick drum earlier that i said sounded kind of good sort of being like a bit longer and having more sub bass it's just initial hit but in context of the actual map For some reason, it sounds like a normal kick drum, even though it doesn't have the actual bass, it just has the initial hit. So I think that's an interesting thing to keep in mind, that although you might think kick drum or a drum with a lot of uh, length, a lot of sub, sounds nice outside, inside a game, really short samples, oftentimes better. I think one of the only kind of exceptions I could think of to the thing I just mentioned would be, say, the thing I did in this one, where Listen to the song just without hit sounding. Right, kind of hard to say how to hit actually hit sound that. I guess I mean almost any sample actually kind of works. But the thing I just do was add a sample like this. Now if that one is almost entirely sub. It does have like a kind of an initial hit, like a. But in context, actually just gives the song more sub bass, which sounds kind of interesting. Like that, that's all it does. Actual feedback comes from the whistles as opposed to that sound. That sound is just kind of adding ambience, low rumble or whatever. I mean, I don't know if I can really recommend that, but that's, I guess one, one case that speaks against what I said before. When it comes to certain sounds that um well, it might be a lot harder to find the right kind of samples. Say this song. 
it's hard to say what kind of sample to use here besides like a kick or something. Even though it isn't, it is a bass. And it's like a bass that has like to uh, tonality. Like uh, you, there is a key to it. Usually when that's the case, it's not a good idea to just straight up um, use like a drum sample. And it's also not a good idea to use something that's that has like a tone to it, unless you're literally key sounding it. The thing that I chose to do is, um, as I make music or whatever, just like a collection full of sounds, like not kind of similar. Like that one. The actual thing, thing here is sort of irrelevant. Important thing about that one is just, I can use that, uh, I can cut it up and I use that thing, making it really, really short, just having the initial hit, because it sounded kind of similar as a sample in the song. Uh, in the hit sounding. Then later on, where the song changes. I just took that same sample and changed it as well. The important thing here, I think, is just that a lot of things you can do with hits, with custom hits on this, are just have the transient, like the initial first few milliseconds of whatever sound you have fit whatever is happening in the song. Like, hits on don't need to be very long, if, and especially if they happen to be really short and kind of snappy, oftentimes they just fit to, uh, together a lot better with what is happening in the song. Uh, so I guess those are some thoughts on like how to choose samples, maybe how to find, uh, look for them or whatever. But in the end, the actual uh, process of finding a custom samples is probably the most like subjective. You can almost um, use any kind of sample over anything and it ultimately will sound how it will sound. And if you like it, then that's that's it. There's nothing really more to say about it. It kind of is in the sense that Again, having shorter, higher pitch sounds gives more feedback, and giving more feedback is probably better in a game. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, sort of uh, open-ended, you can do a lot of different things. In terms of what uh, the thing with the sample sets and additions, blah, blah, blah. Again, have a kind of system, if possible, have the system be as close as possible to just what everyone else is doing. And then maybe think of the uh, hierarchy of how strong different sounds are, like different snare drums. If there are any combinations that disallow you from doing certain things. Oh, and never use softed whistles for kick drums. Please, 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 please hit the melody, please.